those who see you today uh, I mean, looking very prosperous, very successful, and that you think that it's always been like that. Can you tell us a bit about um, your growing up years and how the way you started off uh, prepared you for the challenges that came your way? Like I said, I was um, fortunate. I would say I was fortunate to have come from my family. Because if there's anything that they still in me, is good morals that is working for me today. And um, I can't forget my dad, I can't forget my mom. They play a major role in my life. And, uh, both are late. Now. I have a very rough beginning. Oh, no. Very terribly war rough. I came from, I came from when you, you know, we say, about oh, but you know, if you start from uh, a pattern, you are still very good. <laughs> when you start from the mud, from error form, then you understand better. So that is the way I started from. And uh, like I said, when? I go in engineering, engineering, and I pay. And, uh, that's why I keep telling people there's no, there's nothing you cannot become. If only you believe in yourself. So today I have foundation reaching out and doing all sorts of things I lost. But I look back and see myself how I started. And I think those are the experiences that I got that is really, really helping me today. So I can feed the impulse of some people. When when I look at you, I can see where I was coming from. I can relate with your situation. I could recall that it was all because of 19 naira that I couldn't go to university for eight years. Yeah. And those children, or those of my schoolmates that we finished secondary school together, some of them are already lawyers, some of them are already doctors before I even went back to university. Mm. So you can understand the feelings. But because of my determination, that I just want to be somebody in life. Mm. And that is how vision is always important, that one have a vision. Mm. And, um, like I said, I finished secondary school. There was no job. I needed 99. I needed to pay school fees. I needed to even collect jam. So, and there was no money. And we had to start working. I did conductor. I left conducting. I started doing Gardner. <coughs> then after I was through with Gardner, I was doing lesson. Where I went to do Gardner, you can see how God works at times. Where I went to do Gardner, I was trans, uh, transferred to a particular, you know, there are they are, they are agencies, so they take you to transfer you to a particular home okay. that you'll be working. So I recall that I was working in, in the garden one day. Then I saw the teacher, the lesson teacher of the children. And he was teaching this little girl of the of the owner of the house in a paddock. So and I saw what he was trying to. I said no, and I corrected him. So when I corrected him, the mom was inside the house. So he heard what happens. I mean, she saw what happened, and she was like, ah. so after that, did the, the, the guy left. Then the following day, when I got to work to start working, the woman called me and said, ah, Did you go to school? I said, No. I said, I was just secondary school. I just said, Okay, can you? And I said, Okay, can you teach my. I said, I can do it. Sir. So I started using, that's how I started lesson. So I was using the lesson, comb my salary. So she now ensure that. The agency that posted that transferred mm. me to that place, they shouldn't take me with that. She wanted me permanently. So they said, yeah, okay, no problem. In as well as they are paying them. Mm. So I was collecting double money as the lesson teacher and as a gardener. In fact, it got to a point, she stopped me from being a gardener. She said they should transfer somebody else that she wants to. Maybe I was to just coming to teach the and from there, I was I was there was a time I was a poor clerk. 
I was just collecting and uh, I came back to Lagos and uh, Lagos have been everything for me. Every time I have challenges and I have to leave Lagos, by the time I come back to Lagos and uh, I'm sorry to tell you that you know, I just want to say that uh, when you categorically say that uh, <clears throat> that Gardner uh, home lesson teacher thing was the point of a change of status in my life. That's number one, excuse me, sir. Don't forget your narrative. Okay. And two, I want you to tell us your full name. Okay. So, like I was saying, I'll, I'll come back to the full name. Okay. Like I was saying, I I was like that. I, I was doing the two. I came to Lagos after the demise of my younger sister. And uh, so it was so painful for me because she was. And that's how I got hooked with uh, Tedela's family. So I must say that uh, Tedela then, the former governor, was giving scholarship to children in a way. So my sister was very, very brilliant. She was very brilliant. So she got a scholarship, um, the scholarship there. Unfortunately, the day they brought the letter of the scholarship was the day we are burying that my sister. So it was a tough one for us. And I had to come back from a battle to make us and support my parents. Mm. And that's how I came back and said no. Because it was a very big blow. The lady was the shining light. She was every time she was always coming out with flying colors and also things. So it was like uh, this one they wanted to really so unfortunately it was she was killed. Not just uh, she didn't just die, she was killed. So after that I came to Lagos and I started working in Lagos again. And uh, I was a clerk. I was a Ministry of Education before I went back to the university. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to the issue that that was a turning point. I wouldn't say that was a turning point for me. My turning point was when I also got started working with Ministry of uh, Education here, the Inspectorate Department. Mm -hmm. And um, my inspectors, we go to schools to go and uh, inspect those schools and they will write reports. I was a clerk to the director, Mrs. Morka, I can't forget her name. And this woman noticed me that whenever they bring their report, I will want to read through the report. And at times I do little, little corrections on it. And uh, she, she eventually called me aside one day and said, no, that was even late. So as I was doing that, I also have an uncle who was then the that I was not ready again. I started enjoying those life. That was at the end of the month. You know, there you have to go to Alamsa and collect your money. What's the salary? Peter Dew, everybody runs to mm -hmm. It was block five then. So you go there, you sign, and you collect money. You collect your cash. That's one hundred and twenty naira. So, mm -hmm. and that money was so big then for me, so, and I will have to drink and even buy drinks for a lot of people, a lot of my friends. But I was fortunate. I was living with my uncle then, so I wasn't. Buy any food at home. Mm -hmm. I was not doing anything at home. I have a place to sleep. So <laughs> I wasn't even taking care of myself any longer until that day. I got to the place to collect money. And I was told my money had been issued to you. I said, What am I talking Who did that? I said, Go and call your uncle. I went back to Maryland. They called him my uncle. That's my day. He should be my uncle. Yes, yes, I know. I did it. So what did I do, man? Okay, don't worry, you know what you do. She now put me inside the vehicle. They went back to the place. She approved it, collected the money. And she has calculated my money, my transfer money. I added something to it <laughs> and gave it to me that that's the money for the month. For the month. Said the remaining one, she's keeping it for me. In three months, 
I opened my first account in my life mm. with that money. And that was opened at Wema Bank in that where we have behind that village station now that they just destroyed in Maryland. Mm -hmm. That Wema Bank. That is where mm. I went to open my first account in my life. And uh, mm. after that, that was the money. That's how she was saving money for me. And I took that money, wrote my first job. And that was what earned me my admission in the university. Mm. And uh, after that, the money that was saved was what I used to pay my school fees. Although that money could not take me more than the second semester. Mm -hmm. But to the God be the glory. I was also fortunate when I was in school. There are people, lecturers, who just take interest in me. And uh, by virtue of that, who is this party? No, so, so, who is this party? I said, oh, yeah, it's okay. They just took interest in me. And uh, by that, uh, I started doing tutorial for other colleagues of my of my class, and because I also know why I went to last. <laughs> so what year did you gain admission to university? Nineteen ninety five, and I left in nineteen ninety nine. You've been out of um, the house for um, some time now. Do you miss the activity and the? Um, well, it's a missed feeling for me. Um, if I say I didn't miss what we used to have mm. in the house, but it got a point, I know I don't just want to stay here because I've, I've seen everything. You, see, you can't continue to continue to do one thing the same way for eight years. And you still want to continue doing the same thing every day. You go to the house, you and when you talk about records, I've been able to break so many records at the house. So I felt what, what else could I have at the States as an assembly that I've not done. Mm -hmm. Because when I got in, I, I, I did a lot of research. I said, okay, let me also do this. Let me do this. Because those are the things I didn't really know that could happen while I was house. But to the glory of God, I felt I have so many other things that I could offer my people, but not at that level any longer. So that's how I have to move. Because I felt if I just there, I'll just be more involved. Nothing, nothing special any longer. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing challenging. So, so what is the next level? Well, to God be the glory, <coughs> we are seeing in 2021, 20, <coughs> as, as you can see. And I know that it's going to be 2022, 2023. Mm -hmm before political space starts bubbling again. Mm -hmm. By that time, I pray for sound health, I pray for life, and uh, I know I have a lot to offer my people. I, have, I know at any capacity that God will design. When it is time, it will be unfolded. Thank you. I um, let me ask this last question. I remember I was asking the last question. I have a question. No, he said this for him. Uh, I, I remember I asked this um, question um, previously when I interviewed you some time ago. Your people feeling a bit aggrieved at the turnout of the primaries at the time and all of that. Do you now feel encouraged that things have changed and you want to you know, bring yourself forward again and, um, and serve your people? Well, I would say. We are watching keenly. There is a lot of wrong things going on in our party. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've learned that you cannot just leave it to the mediocres. You can just mess up everything. So we cannot just keep quiet. When it is time, like I said, we will, throw, we will go into the ring and uh, do the needful. Mm -hmm. But I am aware that. Uh, there's a lot of things that are going wrong. There's a lot of things that are not palatable. That that wasn't the ideas of that we do have when the party was formed. That wasn't the basis of our campaign. And uh, we also know that we have people that have great minds in the party that will bring change 
the genuine change we all can vast for within a party. Uh, we must not uh, try to cover up. We know there is so many things that was wrong that is wrong at me with our system. And uh, we've done well altogether in some other areas, but there are areas that we need to work on. And I thank God that uh, government is, is continuing. Uh, we, we can always see things through other governments' interventions. We have seen different, even in our <coughs> country today, we see different, within the same party, we see governors that are challenging other governors in terms of their infrastructure development, in terms of what they have been able to deliver to the people. So I know that uh, we can do better than what we're doing today. And we have what it takes. We have the human capacity. We have people that we can look up to that could change things. So let's talk about your limits. Um, I show you. At what point did you meet him and how did he reflect your career? Well, um, I met Ashwaju in 1998. I've been watching him from afar. I've been during the SDPNRC and Nadeko period, he became my hero that period. And by the time he came back to Nigeria, that he wanted to come and contest after the ban was lifted for politics. And uh, when he came back, I I know and I could recall he was planning to come and become a senator and probably become the senior president. But by virtue of the fact that he was also the the presidency is also coming to the southwest, okay. <clears throat> and then some of us were convinced that that is the best material for us as a governor of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. That this state needs him, and then we started. I would say I was one of the youngest people that uh, started this cam uh, this campaign, mm -hmm. and I was coordinating the youth and students across the state, not just. Uh, in a particular place, but across the state to champion the cause of attracting becoming the governor of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. And we have our leader of Benin, Rao Farek as the DG of the campaign then. And then that's when all I meant to the campaign of the of Batko was formed at Sunday at the Gold, where the Yaloja general, the mother of Ashwagala of Lagos was residing. And that's where we started pulling up uh, benches together and uh, planning a particular place to use as office and that sort of things. I'm sorry, pasting poster. I was very, very instrumental to paste, poster pasting, to organizing young people minds across the states to let us support Ashwajo's bid for the governorship. And then um, the last time I I launched my book of Ben Aronque Shola was the chairman of the of the occasion then and he also recounts on my activities and some other young fellow that we worked together mm -hmm. to achieve that thing. I recall that even there was an incident that happened in Ekpe that uh, the votes from Ekpe will have uh, jeopardized the his emergence as the governor as the governorship candidate for our party in the head because some people have gone to cook up um a result that wasn't the true picture of what was on ground and uh, that result was cancelled via our my intervention and other uh, junk dynamic youth that we went together at that particular period to stop that 
the legal plan mm -hmm. that they have that could have from uh, truncated <coughs> that uh, is emergence as the governor of Lagos State in 1999. So to God be the glory uh, since that time. And I could recall that when he became the governor, there was a particular day I was, I went to pay him a cozy visit. And that was in October 10, 1999. Uh, you can imagine how young mm -hmm. I was then. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have to come and visit the governor of the state. Mm -hmm. And he has to bring all the media to come and cover a young boy mm -hmm. coming to visit him. Just like all those, our papa, our papa were visiting him mm -hmm. then. And the young boy was also coming to us on all the newspapers then. And also, is uh, both a uh, print and uh, um, electronics. electronics media all covered it. That one Chegorula day came to pay a visit <laughs> without no office, not holding any <laughs> office, no official, not in any official capacity. But we did that, and uh, to God be the glory, uh, that was the beginning. Like I said, I met him during the campaign when we were still trying to bring him to become with other comrades. I know there are so many other comrades that I was able to bring in. All the student union you know, president there in Lagos State was contacted by me. And I was able to bring everybody together, the youth organizations across the state. So there is hardly any part of Lagos State that I have never posted poster before. <laughs> and there is no part of Lagos State that I cannot go to and bring out minimum of 20 leaders that have worked with me, mm. that I have interacted with in the last, from that period of 1988 date. Mm. So for me, Lagos is home. Everywhere I am in Lagos, Badagi, Alimosho, Agege, name it, Lagos, name it, anywhere. I always have somebody that can, can always uh, call upon that. So, okay, I want to do this, so I mm -hmm. will be ready to, because during that period, whatever thing we get, we ensure that uh, there is a lot of transparency and the, the accountability was also a major thing. Because once people can trust you as their leader, you enjoy. And that's what is still working for me to go there. Mm -hmm. So I can see really with the young ones without any ill feelings mm -hmm. about them. I see bring all of them together, even when they want to scatter, scatter everything. Mm -hmm. What sort of pressure are you going through, you know, from your people, your constituency? I remember witnessing one of your empowerment programs um, at the time. I don't know if anyone has been able to equal that um, up to date, know. I'm not posting you know, that so, nobody has ever been able to equal what we did with that, empowerment at that, that time. It was massive. Yeah, yeah. How are you dealing with the pressure? You know, because I know that now that you're you know, outside of the house, um, you won't have this that sort of structure to continue to run, you know, that empowerment program at that, at that level. Yet, yeah, people will be yearning. You know, I'm talking about a situation where over a hundred people were working on grinding machines. Maybe another hundred will go with their dressing salons. Another hundred will go with them. Um, you know, so what sort of pressure do you deal with with people still wanting you to reach well, out to um, them? That is my life. I live a life of giving. I'm no more in the office, but I still continue doing what I know how to do best with my. Because even when I was doing it there, people thought, ah, maybe somebody is giving him money. And I keep wondering, if that fellow is giving me money, that fellow should give himself <laughs> money now and do it. Or give it to the people directly. But as I said, they all this. They said all sort of things when Fashola was there, when Abode was there. Those are the two governors I work with as a member of the house. But I keep doing my things because politics was for me a platform for me to reach out to people, to bless people. Um, mm -hmm. Olenbomi Shuri, 
a former colleague of mine said something that's very, very true. Uh, one of my, one of the, what they call it, uh, documented that was done for me when I was leaving the house. And he said that if there is anything he knows, that if politics is about Nara and Kobo, he is very, very sure that Odula Day lost in the entire eight years. <laughs> if his balance sheet is to, <laughs> to be considered. And that is the reality. Because it wasn't about what I get from government. It's about what I could get from my business or heart to whatever color and cover that I get to bless people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's what still continues today. I'm no more in office, for goodness sake. But I can assure you that I still do even far, far better than when I was in the house. And I will tell you why. When I was in the house, I would say, most of my focus was in the pen. Okay. But today, people coming from Kwara, Ilori, they come in from every part of the country. They needed this. That was a that was a guy that I sent to university all through. And I've never met him until last year. Was it last year? Yeah. Until 2019. Okay. When I went to Abuja. That was the first time he, he has graduated. He's serving in Abuja. He said he's an orphan. He's in, uh, and I keep sending him money from Anambra State. Hmm. So I keep sending him money <coughs> and everything. So by the time I got to Abuja, and he said, he just called me and I said, ah, then where are you? He said, I'm serving in Abuja. I said, I'm in Abuja now. And he have to come. That was the first time I ever seen him in my okay. life. You understand? So I have a lot of people like that. So it's not about the office. It's about who you have. Mm -hmm. And what people should understand that your office is not a permanent one. Power is transit. Where you are today, you will leave the place. Mm -hmm. well, someday, somehow, people will, will be hard of you, become former. If you are not former, you'll be late. Mm -hmm. God forbid. So he said that you are former this. If you are former, you should thank your God that you are still former. Because that means God has granted you long lives. At the age of 90, you can't be saying you want to be House of Assembly mm -hmm. or you want to be governor. They say, ah, but I go and sit down. Mm -hmm. You understand? But they can say, ah, this is a former president. This is a former governor. This is a former assembly. This is a former senator. When you are former, you should be grateful to God. But when you are former, what do people say about you? should be a guiding principle for everybody who is, who is in office. Today, I'm no more in the office. You can see what is happening. If for uh, if I'm in the office, maybe somebody will have said, and I can tell you authoritatively, nobody gave me one naira for everything we did from government sector. I didn't collect one naira from anybody. So it's not about being in office or not, not being in office. It's about what you can do, what you can, the kind of value you can add to it. You are awarding somebody scholarship to study. When I was in the house, I also started a foundation, which is known as the Lady of Care Foundation. Mm -hmm. We, today, that was a particular period, I would just want to mention. That all the student union you know, presidents and speakers, they all passed through that foundation in all our institutions in Lagos State. That alone is a blessing for me. And um, that foundation has been able to empower them, not just giving machines and uh, giving equipment or tools for their businesses that matters. What those foundations have been able to do is to develop young leaders that at the end of the day, a lot of them, they started businesses. I was, I went to a place some, about a few years ago in a function, in a party, and the lady that was doing the offering there said that she came to my foundation and that is how she started an offering business. And that is what 
she's living on today. Mm -hmm. I know the lady has now graduated to become an event planner. So you can understand, apart from having the the auction business, she's also an event planner today. So you can understand that, that <coughs> we've been able to develop people. There was a day I went to a, a chopping mall just to pick something. And then I met a young man walking past me and he just saw me and said, Hey, Elenio. I said, ah, thank you, sir. That, do you see this range? It's my car. I said, what, what was that? I put you, what does that? How does that affect me if you come with a range? He said, you don't know me again, sir. I said, I don't know you. He said, you pay my financial school fees. He said, you gave me a letter to where I am working today to be able to buy this range. You gave me a letter to that same place that I am happy with my family today, that I'm doing well for myself. So whatever thing you need in this place, I want to buy it for you. That is the kind of things that I have been enjoying all around. With those children, those people that people have neglected. I could recall there was a cleaner in, in my office at Laha that at Lagos State House when I was staying in the house. Yeah. house. There was just a cleaner. And I paid Said when I saw him speaking good English, I said he should go and bring his results. I asked him to go and buy jam. Paid him. He entered the school. Today he's a graduate. Those are my job. Do you understand? So like that, like that, we've been able to touch life in different ways. We're not just giving money. We're not just giving. We're equipping them. And that's why when when you see me, said in any of we build people. I'm a builder of people. So for me, I believe that wherever you are, how do you touch life? I recall um, that there is, there is another fellow that was work, that is working with me now that she couldn't even do, she didn't finish primary school. I said, okay, what do you want to do? You can't just be walking in, around me and you'll not be able to do something mm. with your life. You can't do that. So we continue to add value to people wherever you are, irrespective of where you come from. I'm less concerned if you are outside by you. If you are your back, that's that's your cup of tea. I want to ensure that everyone that is around me has a story to tell. So um the, the my my home is that I believe that the greatest investment that anybody can have in life is to invest in mankind. <clears throat> so, and that is what I'm particular about. You understand? Those infrastructures, those buildings, those schools. I went to Dark on this school. I mean, I, I school. It's not in Dark on this school, but I schooled in one of the classrooms. Dark on the classroom there. Mm. You understand? <clears throat> and I recall that we have Dark on the gutter. Okay. We have the library. We have the Alston King. Yeah. We have roads that were constructed by him that open up communities. Today, anybody can talk about Lekki, you can talk about uh, Aja, you can talk about Ibeju Lekki today because somebody opened up those areas from Morocco down to Ekwe. Because if you must come to Lagos before then, you have to come to Egypt in my community. And that's why we say, Poco Poco region, Ekbekbe, mm, mm, mm. If you are coming to Lagos, then, <laughs> if you are coming from Lokoja, you are coming from uh, Delta, Wari, wherever you are coming from, and you want to come to Lagos, you must come to Egypt. Mm. Even as a small boy, I could recall that when I'm sending something, inside water, you can, you can be on the... Uh, in the water on the water for almost about three acres mm. of land, you'll be walking without you knowing that because the 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 K or what they call it, the sheep, they just they they pass beside themselves. So okay. you just be walking on, on on those boats want to from one to the other without mm. knowing that there is anything as a mm. small boy. So you can understand. That's why they say what cocoa region, but that one they see beyond that. 
said we can also open up this area. So those are visionary leaders. And that's why I said, when you continue to build people, when you continue to strengthen their capacity mm. and open up their height to some things that they do not see, a lot of those people participated in my foundation, they started businesses. There was a day, somebody ordered an Uber man. And the Uber man came to my office. And I was seeing the fellow up, out. And immediately, the guy saw me and said, ah, is it not a lady? He just came down and prostrated. I said, ah, Uber, what are you waiting for? I said, I came to your program. He said, today I have three vehicles that I use for Uber. I was an unemployed youth looking for employment after I graduated. But your program changed my life. Those are the things that turned me on. And the fellow, the guy came, he said, he just dropped me. He said, he said, he said don't call, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to collect one copper from you. That's because of Because of it. Anyway. That is just it. Those are the things that uh, will make you just want to continue to do good. Mm-hmm. Thank <laughs> you.